guys. Welcome to a definitive guide on how to 1 million percent, 3 gazillion FPS, decrease your input lag to near zero. Okay, so you've seen a million guys on the internet, like, oh yeah, you gotta do the, the billion control panel settings. Well, here's a simple thing. All you need for this tweak is you're gonna have the worst computer in the world. It doesn't matter if you have fast RAM, doesn't matter if you have the ideal 3070 Ti in terms of input lag, you want something that is just a PC that isn't garbage. I, you might have Ryzen, Ryzen's usually worse in input lag, but okay, let's start from step one. The simplest things, right? If you have Nvidia cards, Set your power management mode to maximum performance, shader cache off, and threaded optimization if you have more than two cores. If you have any kind of threading, turn that on. Everything else, you're fine. Don't need to touch it. Close that, after applying of course. And then number two, download MSI Utility V3. Google that real quick, comes up on the forum. MSI Utility V3. Right here, forums, guru3d.com. Download the link straight from here, run as administrator, and you're good to go. Very, very, very carefully listen. Untick all of your devices that are not PCIe root ports, that are not PCIe ports, that are not AMD PSP devices. Do not touch AMD PSP, it will brick your windows. Okay, everything else though, you're fine. Anything that isn't part of a root or anything like that, you can uh, you can disable MSI mode. You don't need MSI mode. MSI mode groups up your inputs and waits for the CPU to like allow an interrupt, right? The MSI off allows directly interrupting to the CPU without any like concern really for any priority. So turn all of these drives will be set to high prior, set them all to low. If you have a network adapter, set that to low. If you have a if you have Intel Management Engine Interface, set that to undefined MSI mode off, right? All of that, follow this. Graphics card needs to be high. All your USB adapters, every single USB adapter needs to be set to high because if you're gonna be using USB, and I recommend if you have USB 2, use a USB 2 adapter. That thing does work, okay? So use that, make sure to use that. I'm just gonna check that my audio is actually capturing. I sure as I hope it is. And, uh, okay, let's uh, get to the next part, which is, we'll go to services. Disable sysmain. Sysmain needs to be permanently disabled and stopped. Do that. Very easy. You just right click the service and then you select disable and you're good to go. And then, I think there's like step number four or something. You need to disable high precision event timer. And if you want, you can disable all the other ones that I've got here, which are completely, well, in reality, quite pointless you don't really need those unless you have like a network adapter then you might want to turn on the network adapter thing and yeah okay step number five get USB USB audio and get this USB Wi-Fi or at least a USB wired adapter because here's the thing when you run direct PCIe to the CPU it's another lane that the CPU must keep open and then talk to. So if you're directly interrupting to the CPU, it's going to take priority over everything else. It doesn't matter how low you set the priority, it's still going to send it straight to the CPU and at a much higher bandwidth than, say, a USB device, right? And if you plug these onto USB 3, modern USB 3 from Intel 12th generation, 13th generation, and uh, especially USB 3.2 for mouse input, is going to be much better than USB 2 of the previous generations, which used to be the gold standard. Now, if you don't have that, you can always go and buy a VIA card or any uh, card that's worth its salt on AliExpress, right? So USB 3 expansion card from, say, Favor. Favor sells really good cards. If I can actually type correctly, that would be good. Ah, yes. These guys are the ones that sell USB usually. So they don't have USB 3.2 yet, but the USB 3s, they have plenty of. And when I say plenty, they certainly have plenty. You don't even need to plug in a, um, a thing into the back of it. It just works, right? So there's a lot of brands. Uh, there's some NEC kind of chips at the back here. From my experience, the VIA or the VLI chips, they're exactly the same thing. 
are the best in terms of uh, reliability. I haven't really tested it too much for input lag, but from what I can see, it's quite responsive. Plug that into the, the CPU side PCIe, don't plug that into the chipset side PCIe, make sure that you can find one with CPU side PCIe. And that usually is above the PCIe X16 lane, nearer to the CPU, all right? Uh, just check your manual, consult it, make sure you're doing the right thing there, because you do want this to be CPU side, okay? This is the VLI or the VIA module, and they are deadly reliable. I've never seen a single one break on me. I think there is a step six, that is, you get a MSI afterburner and you overclock your video card, okay? Only if you have aftermarket thermal pads and only if you've already done your thermal pairs. Don't try to do this on any stock uh, video cards because usually on NVIDIA 30 series, if you go over, say, 500 megahertz on the memory clock, you're usually going to start crashing in games like Rust, okay? So for me, I play a little bit of Unity games. The Galax 3070 Ti is by far the most insane memory overclocker that I've ever seen in my life on any video card bar none. This thing can go up to plus 2000 megahertz on the memory clock without really throwing any errors in say Valorant or Counter-Strike, right? If you play Tarkov or uh, Rust, then you might need to turn this down about 15 to 1700, depending on how heavy the game is and how many bases or how long your load distance is, right? In Fortnite, this thing can stay at about 1700. Absolutely no repercussions. The faster your memory clock is on your video card, the faster your mouse feels. The faster your RAM clock is, also, the faster your mouse feels. But you gotta remember, the latency needs to kind of stay on the same cast latency in nanoseconds or in clock cycles, right? And um, if you start touching those, then you're gonna suffer a little bit left or right. And ideally, you also want your core and your cache to be synced in speed. This readout is completely invalid uh, because it's task manager and not an actual piece of uh, usable information. Use hardware mon or open hardware mon and you'll be able to see what I mean. So I've already covered this in my last video where I overclocked my RAM and my CPU to 4.8 GHz in synchronous mode, which means we're doing one-to-one, -one, cache to core, and to the memory, so they're all running at 4.8 GHz. And this really makes everything feel like it's in real time. Like, I haven't felt anything like that since the days of uh, third gen Intel, right? Everything since and uh, before that, like after we hit Windows 10, 11, it's just been feeling like potato. All right. That aside, that's all you really need to do. Uh, if you want to go further, you can just download Oh No, Shut Up 10. This is a really good app for controlling what Windows does to you. I just turn on the um, microphone and I leave everything else off because it's pretty pointless. Turn off all the telemetry and all the BS here from Goltana, Microsoft Edge, Location Services, User Behavior. I keep Windows Update off permanently, although this last option likes to toggle on and off. These two over here. Disable Windows Automatic Updates always fixes itself after like three reboots, so you just have to revert the changes and then just restart the computer. I have this to launch on startup, so I can do that quickly, and yeah, I never play games when Windows has updates enabled because it gives like a whole extra millisecond worth of input lag, and it is extremely bad for snap aiming. Alright, that's all done and dusted. Make sure you're setting the right things to line base, okay? Make sure high precision event timer is off. And that is it. All we have to do to get this Windows system running nice and toasty. All right. Now, uh, I don't have to restart because I've already said everything correctly. Uh, but you will have to restart your computer and then pop right back in. Let's get into some benchmarks, guys, and we'll see where it goes from here. All right, guys, you got to make sure that when you're trying to have a feel for this, that you only use your mouse and try to get a feeling before and after these tweaks, okay? It's very important that you feel that your mouse is lighter without physically being lighter, if you know what I mean. If you swing it left and right on the desktop and feel no delay, and if you go in game and all of a sudden you can start staffing and hitting headshots like, uh, like it's a cakewalk, then you've done the right thing and it looks like uh, it'll be fine then. And uh, yeah, if it works for you, please leave a comment, uh, leave away if you want to test this out. I do have a 1000 FPS camera, but that's kind of like extremely low resolution, so I'm usually abstaining from doing any definitive uh, numbers benchmarks on that. But if you can just 
give it a, a whirl, right, and give it a feel, you'll see what I mean. Valorant is just pay to win bro, I don't know what's going on here, but it's got some sort of EOMM going on. Like, you will never get this in CSGO. What? <laughs> like, the game's input lag is fine. Uh, it just doesn't want you to hit anything. And also, everyone has input lag advantage over you for some reason. Like you can be a machine, and these guys might be like silver too, but they'll always destroy you. It's rigged, so... It's not so rigged. Like, this is coming from, um, very high ELO CS. I'm playing that like, global, SMSC, sometimes around early. Yeah, I can hit shots. But people just see me before I can see them. Even though I'm holding the angle advantage, or I'm getting the swing advantage, like, just like that. What? Like, they're moving on a, um, a whole other time scale. Valorant says it's a bug that they'll never really fix, but I think it might be something else. Dominating. Right game is known to rig every game they make, but that's just a theory. Kill. If you've ever played League, it's always one-sided. It's always, like, either winnable or unwinnable. There's not really much in between. Yeah, some people just don't have a chance against me, but other people just delete. Knowing Valorant's decent anti-cheat, not many people are really cheating with ever. Oh yeah, to have such a hard score on a deathmatch. Like, how do you respond to that? The guy's on like 40 ping, and he peaks like he's on 500. Like, not only this, like sometimes his spray patterns feel like they're 10 times wider than they should be. I don't think it's netcode, I think they actively mess with your, um... ...the shot spread. Like, it's not RNG. RNG is more consistent than the things that Valorant pulls. Like, I've been... I've never spent a dollar on skins, and I suspect that is why. If I go on League and start buying, um, skins using Amazon Prime subscription, it actually makes my games feel easier, I should you not. And my mate who has spent 10 grand in total on skins, uh, he somehow managed to get to Ascendant. <laughs> Even though he, he used to suck in um, CS back in the day, he was like silver. And as soon as he moved to Val and started buying skins, it just started, I don't know, does it correlate? I'm not sure. But my friends have all spent money on the game, and those who spent more money on the game got higher ranks. It could have some kind of effect though. Could be better win. Optimized matchmaking. Let's check that out. Like, if you care about competitive integrity, you're not gonna let your netcode be this bad for this long. Like, I'm talking, I'm getting swung by silvers and bronzes. And just like that. Just like that. Dominating. I didn't even finish my sentence. I, I'm getting swung, they're still running on my screen, and I get headshot. You never see that in CSGO. Even if you're playing in Asia on like 200 ping, you will never see that. Like, the game actively will give one player an advantage over everyone else. Or several, usually. People say that it's ping related. I've tried using Clumsy to adjust my ping up and down, but it doesn't really do anything. Even if you throttle the sending packets, 
Now, instead of streaking me 10 games wins, 10 games losses, it's just random, like, nearly totally just disadvantaging me every single gunfight. Seriously, this game? Don't play this game. This game's garbage.